this electric truck. I mean, the idea is that as you produce more, you get economies of scale, the price can come down, and then you're off on your own. It's a great launch thing. Now, the other way that uh, uh, governments incent other countries to develop cleaner technologies is our regulations. For example, if, if China or any other country wants to sell trucks in the United States, it has to meet very stringent emission standards. They have to lower particle uh, emissions from those trucks to near zero levels. NOx, near zero, hydrocarbons, everything has to come down. So if you want to sell them in this market, and the same in the EU, you have to meet these very stringent standards. And the other kind of countries, China and India, are gradually developing those standards. They're not there. They're not going to be there for a while. But that's a very important way that our government can drive the world economy in terms of uh, sustainability. We'll do the same thing with CO2 emissions. California has a certain percentage of vehicles that have to be zero emissions, i.e. electric vehicles. That's how you can do that. And California ends up driving the whole U.S. Because what companies can sell uh, just into the rest of the U.S. and not California? You can develop products that will go into the entire U.S. And they end up driving the whole world with, uh, with their emission standards. And you know, I think Kyoto is designed to create that global standard, but I don't think it's necessarily needed to simulate innovation. What you really want to do is create pockets of innovation where they build on each other. Um, I, did, I grew up in Boston, and the governor of Massachusetts decided biotech was the future <coughs> of the region. And he created tax incentives, and now it's an amazing energy uh, engine of innovation. You know, Silicon Valley isn't accidentally dropped in California. It was in the, you know, it was incentives from the government to focus there. I know a number of states right now are all competing to be the center of battery technology, the center of wind technology, and the center of solar technology. There is strength in having a lot of this entrepreneurial energy in one place. They build off each other, and, um, and you know, it, it comes down to an issue of national competitiveness. Unfortunately, in this country, it does come down to some issues around industrial policy, which makes a lot of people really uncomfortable. I don't think we can afford to not have one, but we live in a globalized world where we're competing against countries that do. Um, yes, China may make a mistake, but if they don't, they're going to eat our lunch. And so we got, we got to be very careful on this one. One more question. Yes, please. Um, my name is Spencer Campbell. I'm an undergraduate student. I'm studying environmental management. <clears throat> environmental regulations concerning business practices, um, emissions, or whatnot. Um, to, to me, it seems like why the regulation that you can make an exception for certain people, and if you have enough money, you can make that exception. And I find special interest groups change, changing the playing field in their favor. And I'm wondering, that this question to the panel for me, what's a way First, raise awareness about alternatives, and secondly, um, how can we level the playing field to be even for everyone, and not just for the deepest pockets, but who has the best business model? Here's one for you. Know, something along these lines came up in my breakout session. And the point I tried to make is that uh, you know, for our industry, for trucks, probably the biggest uh, innovation, the biggest step change in lowering emissions occurred in 2007 because we had meet these very stringent particulate matter and NOx standards. And in order to meet those, we had to put a particle trap on the engine. There was an oxidation catalyst. But a trap that captured those particles. And it was an amazing uh, technology, an amazing innovation. Not only does it trap the particles, but because there's platinum on the catalyst, those particles were burned. And basically, CO2 and water vapor comes out. Extremely uh, clean. 99.9% .9 of what comes out of those vehicles built in 2007 and later, later is CO2 and water vapor. Now, no company, that trap costs $10,000 per truck. No company is going to go out and put that trap on on its own. You go out of business. You couldn't compete. Your competitors uh, would, would you know, eat your lunch. You need a regulatory agency like an EPA to come in, pass the emission standard, level the playing field so that everybody has to put that trap on. And then we all, you know, of course, the we all bear the cost of that as a society. But to me, that was a very important thing to do by the regulatory agencies. Very good in innovation. There's no more of that black smoke, that diesel smell. A lot of you know, the hydrocarbons, everything is removed. So 
So regulators, that's to me one of their main purposes, is to level the playing field and force the entire industry to do that. As far as I know, there was no one that would, that was able to get around that, that regulation. Nobody has to apply by it. And before I was a professor, I actually worked for the EPA. And I can tell you that in environmental regulation, one of the biggest, what you might call special interests, is those regulations better not hurt small businesses. Mm -hmm. That's a very big driver in development of environmental regulations. You have to show that small businesses aren't going to be hurt. So sometimes you don't want to you know, shield all special interests here. Beyond that, I think you're getting to a broader issue of, of the role of um, you know, um, special interest politics. And that is, that's just a broader issue of, of our role as citizens of the United States to, to speak up when we see this, to vote um, uh, with our conscience, or just simply to vote, period. I mean, a lot of people don't vote um, to make, you know, you'd be surprised what a letter to your congressman or senator can do, because not a lot of people do it. So it doesn't take many numbers for them to say, you know, people are watching. You guys should be careful about this one. So, uh, you know, I would encourage you to get involved, pay attention, voice your concerns when you start to see something that you think is not right. And, uh, and encourage others to do it too. Mobilize the students on this campus. Well, um, last semester I attended a large conference in Washington, D.C., which then out of those students. So it was like the largest student gathering ever to send on Washington, D.C. And um, it was all about environmental issues, clean power. It was great.